have you ever had something like this where it's a collage of things that you painted, designed, you bought online, and you want to separate them all into individual layers in Photoshop so that you can edit them individually? That's what I'm going to show you how to do really, really easily today. Now, what you might have done in the past is use any combination of the different selection tools to select each individual element, create a new layer from it via a copy or via a cut. That's totally effective. You can still keep doing that if you like it. But what I'm going to show you today is way, way faster. So let's dive in. So the first thing we're going to do is download the correct script. If you've used scripts in Photoshop before, that's great. If you haven't, I'm going to walk you through it at the end. So you don't have to skip to that if you already know what you're doing here. I'm going to link this script below. It is free. So it's called Split to Layers. And you can just download it here at this link that I'm going to share with you. I'll walk you through how to install it afterward, but I want to get to the magic first. So once you've got it installed, you can open up something like this. I created this art in mid journey and I want to separate all of these elements into their own layers. The first thing you want to do is unlock your background layer. If you need to, it won't work otherwise. And we need to get rid of the white background. The way the script works is it separates any concentric touching pixels. So we need to have that gap between different elements if we want them to separate. And the way to do that is by making the background transparent. What I'm going to do for something like this is just click W for the magic wand, select all of the white and go ahead and delete it. And now we have a transparent background. You can see there's a few instances of white. I'll go ahead and delete this one. I'm not going to worry so much about these really tiny ones, uh, but you can do that to whatever level makes sense for you. You can see that some of this pink flower and some of this light purple watercolor did go away when we did that. So you might want to, for instance, turn on the tolerance on your magic wand tool. Uh, you might have to do a little bit more finagling to get that white background gone, depending on how the contrast in your image is. But whatever you need to do, just create that transparent space between any of the elements that you want to separate. Looking at this, I see a couple other things you might want to do. It's all up to personal preference and you can do a lot of editing uh, before and after you use the script. So for instance, I see this pink flower is kind of running into this green leaf and I might want that to be separated. So I'm gonna take a really small eraser and just go between those. I'll probably end up just deleting that green leaf in case the edges are weird, uh, but I'll keep that pink flower. For instance, if you wanted you know, this green leaf to be separate from this orange flower, you could do that as well. If you wanted this little sprig of red to be separate, you could separate it a little bit right here um, if you didn't want it combined with the rest of this. And then you'll also find that some of the elements will separate that you might not want to. For instance, this green has some transparent space between the leaf and the stem. So if you do want those uh, connected, then you'll need to reconnect them later. So to run the script, we'll click file scripts and split to layers. It's really that simple. <laughs> and I attach it to a keyboard shortcut. So whenever I press control Q, it automatically does this for me. Now here you can set a limit to the gap between pixels. So for instance, if you wanted it to connect things at a really small gap, you could select, you know, 10 pixels, 20 pixels, whatever you want. I usually like to put it at two so it doesn't create quite as many of those like teeny tiny little pieces in a watercolor element. Uh, but you'll see what I mean in a sec. And you can always preview your results. Then you can select some options for layer naming. I typically like to rename mine afterward, so I leave that and you'll click OK. Now, sometimes it will pop up and tell you that if this is going to create a lot of layers, potentially this is up to 105. Oftentimes it's less than that, but I always click yes. And you can adjust that gap size. If you want to make it smaller, then make that gap size bigger. Now it needs to work for a second. Okay, that took a couple minutes because as you can see, I have 27 other files and I'm recording. It's always gonna keep your original layer in case you need it, but turn it off. I am gonna delete it in this case, um, just to keep the file a little bit smaller for now. <laughs> and usually it starts with like some of the bigger top elements at the top and you can kind of see through the layers, which florals are in which different layer. You can also turn them on and off to see what you've got here. What I tend to like to do is just turn things off as I go. And then there's often gonna be some layers that have um, selected like really small stray pixels and things. And so I can delete those really easily later. For instance, when I grab this one, you can see it's only like one or two pixels over here. So I'm just going to delete that and kind of keep deleting in that area until, oops, 
they accidentally deleted one of those blue bubbles. So just a couple things is like if you wanted this leaf to be combined with this particular one, you can always select both of those and click Control or Command E, and that's gonna combine them into one layer. If you have something that you want to separate, for instance, we've decided now that we want to separate out this little red piece, you can always use the eraser or any other tool to create a little bit of space. Select this layer and then rerun the option, or you could rerun the original document with a different gap number if you think that would work, just depends on how much space is between each option. So again, we have that original layer that we ran the script on, which is turned off. I'll go ahead and delete that. And then you can see we have this piece as its own layer, and then this piece as its own layer as well. Now you can do anything that you want with these layers. You have them all separated out, so you could make a collage with them, um, save them out if you're going to sell them, and package them up for a creative market or something. And there's so many different options here, but we saved so much time by not having to manually select everything and create new layers. So I love this script. It's gonna save me so much time and I can't believe it's free. So I'm gonna link it in the description for you to go ahead and take advantage of. And then if you are not not familiar with using scripts, I'm going to show you how to install it. So once you download the script, it'll come to you in a compressed folder and you'll just extract that in your downloads folder. And then you're going to copy just the JSX file into your program files. So the path for that is typically your PC, or if you're on a Mac, it'd be Mac, your operating system, program files. We're going to click Adobe go into Adobe Photoshop. I have a couple versions for various different things. And then in the presets folder, you will find this section down here. My face is covering it. It says scripts. There we go. And we'll just control V, paste that in here. And you can see down here, split to layers, JSX file is already in here. Oh, hey, Bethany here for the Mac rundown real quick. Steps are the same as Lainey said, but you can find that program files that she referenced by clicking applications within your finder window. Open the Adobe Photoshop folder, then presets, scripts, and paste the copy JSX file just like she said. Good to go. And then that is what will allow the script to show up right here in file scripts split to layers and then if you want to you can go into edit keyboard shortcuts and select a keyboard shortcut that you want to tie to that so that like every time i click Control q it opens that script so let me know if you found this script helpful i'm so grateful to this user who created it way back in 2012 and i hope that it helps streamline your workflow if you're interested in more photoshop adobe design stationary tutorials definitely stick around and watch some more and let me know in the comments what you thought Thanks, everyone.